Hello, Mr. Walter Finley. How are you doing today, sir? The two of you, you're everywhere anymore. I mean, I mean, the last time I talked with you guys, you, you were performing on a boat on Lake Norman just to keep people entertained during the lockdown. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, that was a, an amazing um, experience. I never saw all that happening. I never saw that uh, going the way it did, but it, I guess... The pandemic pandemic had us doing things right that we normally wouldn't have done, and uh, yeah, it was a wonderful experience. We met a lot of wonderful people, and um, that went on for about three years. We I think we're going to do another show in March or April, like an anniversary kind of thing. <laughs> and then uh, because of the uh, boat show, I guess that's why we won those awards for duo of the year that year and the following year and. Yeah, a lot of good came out of that for us. Well, I always looked at it as being, because the more and more I read about it, I kept going, see, they put themselves out there for the people. Now the people are responding. This is the gift back to the you know to your creativity, to your art, because you were there when others were not. Yeah, I was, uh, it was, you know, I don't know if what we talked about, it, what we talked about last time. It was kind of a fluke thing, but um, it was, it was kind of a full circle moment for me because the first time I played on the dock was because I needed to play I mean I'm, I'm a, I performed for so many years and I wasn't performing and I was I go is Bigiti Kumalo he was on that call me yes song. yes you yeah that? yeah call me yeah and I turned around we were getting ready and he goes uh, some people don't understand me you know I love coming out to play with you but yeah, you because know, you're a good player, and you can get. But I, I just need to play. I need to keep playing, and I felt that same feeling that day. And I just set up to play, and there was a couple of boats in the water, and it was the end of March. And one boat came up and said, "If you do this next week, we'll bring some friends." And from there, it just I couldn't not play because boats would be waiting for us in front of our house every Wednesday from <laughs> six to eight. <laughs> we had to do it, and it just it ended up being an, an amazing, fun thing. And the uh, friendships that will last the rest of my life uh, came out of it in April, too. By the way, uh, I have April sitting right next to me. Oh. Hi. Well, finally, I get to talk with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I mean, because you guys really have set the world up as as being that duo. And I mean, and, you know, and it's and it's a husband and wife duo. It's a it, you know, it's a creative team. T the two of you together. What what is the creative process like? You know, um, uh, from my point of view. I, I'm not a very structured person. I can't just say, hey, let's just sit down. For some reason, well, let, to back up, I moved to the Carolinas to learn uh, to be um, immersed in a, a culture that would uh, enhance writing country music. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, I was asked to write country songs, and, and I always liked country in, in, the, in the 90s. You know, I got turned on to country music, and I loved the 90s country sound. But I was living in New York and I was surrounded by more progressive people and rock people and jazz. And You were pretty much alone then. Well, April, what, what has it been like for you, especially with this new solo project? For me, if I have a feeling of a sense of accomplishment, then I can go back to bed or take a little nap and then get up and, and go at my day really hard. So I find that my creativity and... My thought processes are very clear between like four and six in the morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so when I'm putting those pieces of the puzzle together, okay, where do we want to tour next? How can I put this together? Where can I get from point A to point B to point C? How can I make everything fall into place? And it, it doesn't fall into place. You have to force that mess. <laughs> I'm so not kidding. I totally get that because I've, I've always believed that creativity is an addiction and you've got to learn to work with it. Well, you really when did. I was a full-time musician, right, or, or entertainer, let's put it that way, I, I get freaky with the word musician and artist, I think there's different lines there, you know. But all I did was music all the time in the world. I mean, I lived alone. I had a place that was set up like a recording studio with a kitchen and a bathroom in it. So, you know, I would wake up, work out, and just write music and then go to work and perform and come home. But since the pandemic, right, I had to find other ways of bringing in money. So yeah, yeah. enter into the regular work world. So that would 
take up my whole day. So was, everything had to change from there on. I would come home from a job on a Wednesday and there'd be 50 boats outside saying, you know, beeping their horns. I had to hurry up and set up all the equipment and start playing, run the house, wash off and, and start playing. I, 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 to- I totally get that because during the lockdown, because I we, we're part of a movie promotion team and we're, we're out there doing with mobile entertaining and things like this, and as well as doing the uh, uh, radio, that I was craving people so much, I went and got a job at Harris Teeter because I needed to perform and I needed to be in front of people. And now it's like I love being with them so much, I, I can't break free of it. Right. And and it's a, it's a the reality, but so the rhythm we're trying to get in now. And the other thing is everything we've been doing is, um, in house right now. So a lot of times people have booking agents and this and that we do have management, yeah. but we've been doing our own booking. And, uh, last year, this, we got the country tour of the year this year from the country, Carolina country music awards. Right. Yeah. And that was, it was hard. <laughs> it was so hard. We did so much. We went from coast to coast. So this year we're about to do it again. I mean, we're already, we got uh, bookings out there far away from Colorado to Utah to, you know, to New York again, Montana. (laughs) But, you know, we'll get the list together and I'll try to get it out there as fast as I can. So, so the, I think the usual rhythm for uh, touring musicians is I think you work from, you know, like spring to fall and then you usually take downtime to put music together albums together and whatnot so we one of the things i used to do up in new york is i would summertime i would kill it you know and but you don't spend your money save your money because yeah. when march comes you're going to need it yeah. you know so you, you learn how to budget and uh and move forward that way we have uh new records coming out in march we have new songs coming out i'm really excited about that we have some meetings going on still um as far as marketing right and promotion and then we have a uh, movie interest. So there's a movie in development right now that's taking the vision song and it should be happening by the end of the year, if not early next year. We'll hear that and see that in a really cool film. See, and I, I love the way that you guys are working it because I'm, I'm blessed with the opportunity to talk with the Teslas of the world and, the, and these big bands that, that have had to do it on their own. And, and, and they've all agreed that this is such a great step for modern day music when you're doing it on your own. You've got your player that's going to do the promotions. You, you got another player that's going to be doing uh, uh, things for the web. Then who's going to be doing the songs and, you know, shaking hands and kissing babies. And to hear your story like this is like, yes, this is where it's at, Walter and April. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That gave me a little shot of motiv- motivation. Yeah. And then and for you guys to tour the way that you are, it's not so easy to go marching into a town or to set things up. I mean, you guys have really got to press the flesh. I mean, are you guys having to rely on social media? Do they sit there and look at you and go, all right, what, what are your social media numbers? I, I need to know who, who would even know who you are here in Montana. Um, we do run into that, but I have to tell you when I now <clears throat> going through all this, it's funny we got a call from billy hume one day he he does youtube shows he wanted to do one on us and he's like walter i just want to tell you you know you're not a kid i go yeah i know <laughs> and i'm amazed at what you're doing and how you're keeping it going the two of you and the, the name of his show is going to be if you can't find a way make a way yep so i can't keep up with what april does and one of the first things i told myself is don't watch what she does on social media or in her thing. Don't get involved unless I'm needed. So I, I let her have at it. And this is the surprise I got. When we, for instance, we went to, uh, uh, where did we go up, up we north? To see the songs from the room. Wisconsin. We went to Wisconsin and the room got filled and everybody knew who we were and what we were about because April floods the area with social media oh, yeah. songs. Oh, yeah. And we, proper advertisement and she talks to the owners of the of the establishment and then they put it out there and and, uh i was amazed at how well that worked it it really does work so whether we have uh a lot of numbers or not because anybody can get numbers you know i i hired a company one time and i had all these followers and when i looked at them they were not followers they were just numbers Mm -hmm. does 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 that make sense they weren't i get it they were just numbers. So the numbers we have today are real organic fans that follow us. 
So coming down from New York to learn how to do country music, which I, I don't know if you know the history of Charlotte, but a lot of country music was coming out of this area. They they really wanted this to be the Nashville part of the world because there were, you know, the, the, the Arthur Smith was here. There were, you know, Elvis played 54 times here. Everybody knew that Charlotte had that energy. Have you become a greater student since you made that decision? It's been a personal growth for me. I've become a better man from moving down south. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Living in New York, and I, you know, and I, when I came down here, I went to Nashville once a month, every every month, and that was a wonderful experience. It was great, and uh, California, because I think something about uh, the Carolina area is not so much about competition; is not such a strong thing, but it's it's like a it's like being a part of a big musical family. Yeah, because everybody plays guitar, banjo, mandolin. It's it's a cultural thing. It's uh, it's a slower paced thing. It's you know, country music to me it was was so hard because I had to slow down and simplify not only my life but the way I wrote because I would always try to write more like the old Peter Gabriel Genesis style, mm, or, mm, you know, mm. something, and always challenge my intellect on my musical instrument and hey look 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 what I'm doing I'm bending my fingers and directions you never saw it go and i'm making sounds and and i still have that in me but coming down here i learned it the storytelling aspect of it how to tell a story wow the writers <laughs> down here uh, you know man i can listen to songs they bring you into the song they envelop you with your story and you can weep or get motivated and really relate to what you're listening to a story in a song and i never understood three chords and the truth well i'm understanding it now mm-hmm. you know to fit your 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 um musical um embellishments in between those verses and make make a good sound uh, i'm getting there now april for you when it came to the music and with uh, with walter you know behind that gigantic control board um was it a new layer of trust that because you're relinquishing a solo project in into the hands of a man that will take your sound to a different level Oh, well, it's like this. Anytime that you work with someone, whoever wrote the song, wrote the lyrics, that's the one who has the major control. So if someone comes up with this idea to throw in this F major 12th chord in the middle of nothing that where it doesn't belong, then whoever wrote the song says, no, I don't like that. Or yes, we can keep that. It's all about having a project that you both can agree on that is something it can touch people you know because at the end of the day you want to give someone something of your heart you want to give them something that's going to make their life better yeah yeah i totally get that because i was reading up about sia so you nobody records a sia song unless she's in the studio with you but yeah i mean as far as creativity goes we're both kind of open to to ideas from each other because with walter wanting to do the country aspect and me growing up in bluegrass and country, you know, we kind of respect each other's uh, opinions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. It's just now after almost five years, it's just now coming around to uh, the sounds and going with the times as far as what's popular right now without going country pop, because I mean, it has to represent us. And it has to be marketable and it has to be something that's going to give love because when you put music out, you're given of your heart. Yeah, one, one of the things that I've, I've run into lately in, um, in talking with uh, country musicians is that uh, there for a long time it was uh, new country, new country. Yeah, I'm doing new country. Now now musicians are saying, this isn't new country. This is my country. This, this, is, this, is, this is about storytelling. This is about creating not a pop song, but rather greater country. Wow, that's exactly yeah, what I that. think. I think I've had this thing that I I believed in for many years, and that was this is my interpretation of this song, you know. And a lot of times I got more compliments than than uh, negativity from people saying, "Wow, you don't really play it like the the record, but we can sing along." Uh, exactly. That's that's. This is how I play, you know, and, and uh, it helped, you know, I would, when I do a cover song, let's say, if I'm covering somebody's song, um, 
that's what I do. I kind of learn it real quick, and then I just start playing it and put my own feeling into it. My uh, sound, my style. This is these are the chords I use, right? This is this is how I do it. Mm. As far as working together with with April, backing up a little bit, you know, it's funny because, uh, it, it you know we we had a problem communication wise because she is so phenomenal at what she does, and I only know how to do what I do. Yeah. So I would take her rhythm and and vocal and build the sound around the way I like, you know, what I think. Isn't that great? And I'm, I'm alive with it. And then it might take a couple months. She goes, yeah, it, maybe if you didn't put those bells and whistles in it or if you didn't put that in it, you know. So we're learning how to communicate to find out what she likes. But I think, and I have had friends that come come, come up to me, don't even need to make a production. You should just do acoustic guitar and sing that that's good enough. And I'm also planning on doing just an acoustic record where oh, we just, man. you know, play our music with our guitars and sing. And another beautiful thing that's been happening is that we're starting to hear each other so much after a few years that we're starting to play together. And that's that's the coolest thing ever. Oh, my God. Yeah. All right, where can people go to find out more about you guys? Because, I mean, you're, you you got to get the word out there. I mean, you really do. Just keep pushing it. Thank you. Um, well, you know, we have our Facebook music play, Walter Finley Music. Spotify is one of the best place, I think, or anywhere you listen to music. But if people would just, um, what do they call that when they subscribe, right? right? If right. they can subscribe to it. Um, and we have the website. We're going to start revamping that you know, over the next few days and get that current. You know, it's so funny with, the, with Facebook and uh, all the social media. It's like I don't even pay attention to the website anymore because there's just so much to take care of right from twitter to instagram yep. to, to facebook you know tiktok youtube we're, we're thinking about doing youtube we i've always wanted to do a youtube show but we were i guess apprehensive about putting our lives like in a reality concept on a youtube you know how to do that um this there's a lot entailed but we're playing with that idea we don't know if if that would be good or not. But. I think to find out more about us, uh, WCNC Charlotte. Yes. We did a, a, a Zoom interview with them, and it can be found on their uh, YouTube channel. So there's that. And then they also shared it with uh, MSN. And it was on the news, I think, Channel 8 and Channel 2. One of them was in Long Island, and the other one was in California, wow. Santa Ana. So no. I, I think that it, it's getting out there, Arrow, and and I think that people are seeing that there's perseverance involved, and and we just feel like we have a responsibility that you know we want people to get out there and live their life and make good memories on purpose, and that's what music kind of gives you. Yep, you know, yep. you talk about the YouTube, and I got to tell you, Paul Stanley of Kiss had one of the greatest quotes when he would uh, do the the live performances. He would go, "Listen." What I'm going to perform today is what I'm feeling right now. It may not be what you heard in the studio, but it's what I feel right now. So I'm just going to share it with you, and we're going to go from there. And I thought, my God, that was very human of him to say that. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what it is. You know, when you're performing like you needed to be around people, we're not alone when we're performing. I, I do see people who go up there, and they just automatically play and say the same thing on every single show and every everything they do, exactly scripted out, and then they leave, right? But then there's the people who mingle with and communicate with their audience, mm -hmm. right? So I can make a set list, but if they're not feeling what's going about to come, I'll play something else. You know, depends how that... There's a mood. There's an energy. Uh -huh. That's uh, there's uh, like a neuro connection between you and your audience, whether it's two or two thousand people, <laughs> or um, that's what you're feeling and feeding off of. Wow. And so, playing what we're feeling right now, or what I'm getting out of this this moment. Mm -hmm. So I don't usually play the same exact solos. I kind of do. I kind of develop because uh, we do a looping thing, right? We'll play a rhythm. We'll sing. I'll do a solo you know, maybe with my wah-wah distortion clean or, or lay or something, then it could be different every time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys have got to come back to the show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, wow, thank well, That's you. great, thanks. Excellent. Well, you be brilliant, the two of you, okay? <laughs> and you too. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys.